And how long have you had him? I've had him for a week now. Only a week? Yeah. It's weird because I can't, I treat animals like they're people. I think yeah, that's how everyone has to, you know, yeah. treat them. So he, I just, he's such a joy. He brings so much joy. I love him so much. What about your fiance? Is he into this whole thing? He loves the dog. He, well, that's he a does. good sign. Yeah. He you want to, you want to meet a guy who is, knows how to be kind to animals and has the patience because I think that's a good sign. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> what, speaking of guys with patience and a good sign of a good catch. What the heck was your dad like when you were a little kid? I mean, Ozzy Osbourne. I can't imagine him saying, get in this house, young lady. Um, my, dad, <laughs> my dad had quite a few tricks up his sleeve. I was, I was a real tomboy when I was little, and I used to hate taking showers. So he would lock the kitchen door, lock the patio gate, stick me in the courtyard, and hose me down. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like, what did your did, <laughs> did you used to go over to other kids' house and go? My dad looks different because you know he was so rocked out, or was everybody like that? I just thought everyone else's parents were really boring compared to mine. That's a good thing to think as a kid. I didn't think that. I just I under, was understood that everybody had a different job and nobody had the same job because none of my friends' parents did, and my dad's job was just to be a singer and instead of like a businessman, I guess. Now, did you guys have parties where everybody would come over? And did you ever have, like, pajama parties? And did your dad, like, play music for them? <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine no. what it's like to have a rock and roll dad. Um, okay, I just had my 25th birthday. On about my seventh, uh, no, about fifth birthday party, my dad decided to play a little game of the Three Little Pigs where he dressed up in his uh, Bark at the Moon werewolf costume, right. locked us in the garden shed and chased around it, saying, I'm going to huff, I'm going to puff, I'm going to blow the house down. And every kid screamed, and my mom had to call their parents because they were all crying <laughs> and had to, had to go home. <laughs> Typical five-year-old birthday party. Yeah. Now, you heard me talking about the Goslins and the Johnny Kate Plus 8 and reality television. How old were you when your show started? Um, I was six, 15 when I agreed to do it and 16 when we started filming. So... I mean, I, when I'm thinking of when I was 16, if anybody had any record of it, I'd be mortified. Because, you know, you're really developing then. You're still trying to figure out who you are and it, who you're going to be. It's one of those things where it, when it was happening, I thought, oh, was so cool. And I look back at it now, and I'm like, oh, like, why? Why did I say half the things that I did? And it's like I thought I was so grown up. And I look back, and I was such a baby. But I think that that's part of the fun of, of growing up is that mm -hmm. you can, I have that to look back on for the rest of my life. And that's kind of magical if you think about it. But then some of it's a bit like, oh, God, no. <laughs> like, well, it was interesting to see the show because certainly your family wasn't average as, you know, middle America would see themselves. But there was a lot of love there. there well, I think that that's the one thing that you can never say about my family. Yeah, we do things alternatively and we're different, but we love each other more than anything in the world. And that's what comes first with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that. Mm -hmm. What made you write that book, the book Fierce, at such a young age? Um, I mean, did you really sit down and say, I want to do this? And Basically, I do a, a radio show when I'm in England called The Surgery, which is kind of like a love line. It's a, the Surgery? Yeah, and you call, it's a young people's advice call-in show, we, and I hosted it. And basically, every single week, we would have thousands upon thousands of calls with questions that, to me, are just common sense. And you very quickly realize that common sense isn't common. And you got that right. It's, it's not. And I then got a job with the Sun newspaper doing a column, which was an advice column. And through that, I then got a book deal to write a young advice book for young girls. And it ended up being really autobiographical because I don't feel that I can tell people what to do without saying how I know not to do that. And right, and you do explain the things you've been through in your own life. And, it, you know, it was, it was really interesting. It was a bit therapeutic, and it came out amazing. And I, I'm in the process right now of rewriting it for America because it's very um, advice-driven and attached to a lot of charities and organizations, and I just want to make sure that I have the right ones here mm -hmm. because they're all very English. They're, they're all very, <laughs> very English. English. I don't know whether it would... Well, in your 25 years, you have had quite a lifetime, mm -hmm. a lot of journeys, but you must be so proud of yourself right now. Every single day something changes now and it mm -hmm. gets so exciting and so fun and to wake up and look at my life and say what do I get to do today rather than what do I have to do today it's it's so fun